People don't realize that many of the things that they are enjoying today come from space. Space is just not merely for astronauts. There's so much more happening as a result of our knowledge of space. Every astronaut we have up there, we have um, a whole flight control team, which has probably 20 people working in it. Then each of those 20 people have another three or four people backing them up. So just to keep all six people in space, we have a few thousand people just working on day, and that's just day-to-day -day operations. It's fascinating. They work in a fascinating field. It's the kind of thing when you're a kid and you grow up, you dream of being a part of. So David Webb came here and he uh, looked around and he said, uh, well, we need to do something different from what others are doing. And he said we should do something which encompasses all aspects of uh, space. We were on a mission. I mean, it's because it was about space. We were all very mission oriented. We wanted to do this and, and so we did. I always liked Arthur C. Clarke's comment on, on the change in technology that we've seen, particularly and on much of it driven by space, is that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And growing up in the 1950s, what we're doing, what we do routinely now is magic. Space. It's not just for astronauts anymore. It is no coincidence that today, this statement rings more true than ever before. The state of high technology in our world is by most standards astounding. Indeed, nothing short of magic when compared to the world not all that long ago. It's hard to find any aspect of our lives that don't in one way or another depend upon these advances an evolution that would simply not exist if not for our knowledge and use of space. In everything from predicting the weather to communications to precision farming, even in exploring the very root of Earth's history, what was once referred to as the final frontier is proving to be anything but. Now, as our future dawns, even more mysteries await critical answers. Solutions that could very well begin with magic on the high plains. Today, the idea that space is about a lot more than just astronauts should really come as no surprise. But what about in 1987? As it happened, 1987 turned out to be just the right time. A bold new concept and a fresh approach to space was in the works and headed for the launch pad. But the real surprise, at least to some, was where this was happening. The unlikely place was right in the very heart of North America at the University of North Dakota, where less than 20 years earlier, John D. Odegaard started what is now a world-renowned aerospace school. Ever the visionary, Odegaard's dream began with little more than a tiny office, a couple of donated airplanes, and a whole lot of passion for aviation. And as much as John Odegaard had high regard for the sky, he would never be satisfied the sky was going to be the limit. In 1987, the American space program was in high gear. The 1960s and 70s had taken us to the moon and beyond. In addition, the exploration of space for practical purposes was well underway. With the space shuttle program in the spotlight, astronauts were, as always, front and center. But again, what about our future in space? That burning question inspired Odegaard to explore, and with that, the task of building the framework for a bold new venture at UND Aerospace was underway. Well, John was a consummate marketer, and he knew how to promote the product. And at the same time, he also knew that he had to have a quality product 
So he worked it from both sides. He had the flash with Buzz Aldrin, and then he had the talented people that built the curriculum underneath it. And that's the reason for the success. Never one to do anything in a small way, Odegaard seized a golden opportunity. To increase the chances the world would take notice, he found a way to bring famed Apollo astronaut Buzz Aldrin to Grand Forks. The second man to walk on the moon would be the first to head up the UND Space Studies program. Not unexpectedly, the young program faced various hurdles in the beginning, but ultimately, Buzz Aldrin's influence would bring other noted aerospace innovators to North Dakota. One such visionary, Dr. David Webb, came to UND to give a speech and left with a whole lot more. He was invited to be a speaker. He was on the um, National Commission for Space at the time, and this was a very big deal. So he was invited out here to speak, and um, what he told me was he spoke about the need for space studies, that there had to be an academic educational opportunity for students to go into space and do other things than being astronauts. And he had said in his talk that this would be the best place for it. So he went home and he said, as soon as he got in the door, the phone rang and it was John Odegaard. And he said, I heard your speech, you're right. Come on back, we will start this department. And so David did. To say the least, Dr. Webb arrived at UND with a remarkable resume. Under his leadership, UND would become home to the world's first interdisciplinary graduate degree program in space studies. As a result, Webb and the budding program soon attracted a solid foundation of expert faculty and the guidance of several other notables from across the space industry. Throughout its history, the UND Space Studies program has experienced steady and sustained growth. And as the 1980s gave way to the 90s, a new group of leaders were poised to break even more ground. With Dr. Webb's departure in 1990, Dr. Chuck Wood stepped into the leadership role at UND Space Studies. In 1993, Program expansion under Dr. Wood's guidance brought the first internet-based degree program in space studies. The master's degree program that followed in 1997 is the very first and longest lived of its kind in the world. Former UND Space Studies professor John Graham taught the very first online class at UND. In fact, first class I taught, uh, we had the first tremendously large blizzard here they shut down the entire university and I was at home on my computer and I taught the first class on the computer with uh, 45 students. In the program's earliest days, the distance in distance learning was more about physical distance for the instructors. The faculty taught on campus, but also traveled to local Air Force bases to deliver courses. The pace was grueling. One semester, technically, I taught eight, eight classes of three hours each. We're really, really working pretty hard. No matter the method of teaching, how much or where, the concept was simple. Bring the program's diverse curriculum directly to an audience already producing in the fields that best support advanced work in the space industry. And with the convenience and ever-increasing power of the internet, UND Space Studies was soon on the radar of students worldwide. Today, the distance mode of the curriculum is the crown jewel of the program. 80% of our students are online and about 20% on campus. Our students are a little different. Um, they're working, most of them. We need a good campus program in order to support a good uh, distance program. So that when it comes to the online program, our students are more mature in a sense. I mean, our campus students are also great, but they're younger, uh, very motivated, but online students are working full-time. Uh, they take our courses so that they can get the broad aspects of space which I talked about, uh, which helps them in going up in their careers. Throughout the history of UND Space Studies, the very backbone of its leadership has been diversity. And just as the leadership has maintained diversity, so have the students and faculty of the program. Solid direction conveys quality, 
an asset that has paved the way for even more success. Three Chester Fritz distinguished professors have come from the ranks of the program, a testament to the department's high achievement. One of the most important aspects of the last 15 years has been the strength of the academic programs. And with that has come master's degrees in all the departments and doctorates in all the departments and the research that comes with that. Uh, Chesterford's Distinguished Professorship is the highest honor given at UND for any professor. That's, you know, a, a great thing for the students as well. You know, learning from someone like uh, Professor Gaffey or Warren Jensen. As a department chair, I'm so proud that we have faculty in our midst who are so good and uh, uh, that makes the program uh, even better. It isn't lost on any of us that six Chester Fitz professors are appointed here in the Odegaard School. Uh, that's a great deal of pride, I know, for the, uh, for the dean of the school. It's a proudful thing for all of the faculty members, and the university is just very, very proud of that distinction here in the department and the college. The latest recipient from the department is Dr. Michael Gaffey, one of the world's foremost authorities in asteroids, meteorites, and comets. To me, it's a great honor, and I, you know, can't quite get my mind wrapped around it sometimes. Dr. Gaffey is modest, almost to a fault, and he is the first to deflect credit and extend accolades to his fellow faculty members and students. But. Like so many of the program's faculty, there's got to be a certain medal to a guy like this. Growing up on a farm in northern Iowa, every time that my father was punishing one of us, they'd send us out into the field to pick up rocks, except that I volunteered. I liked that, so the, the combination of rocks and stars sort of led me into the planetary area, and asteroids were a logical outcome of that. Mike Gaffey's sense of humor is strong, too. He jokes that UND officials will wise up and come to retrieve his well-hidden award. Should he be worried? Uh, Gaffey, I think, can, uh, can hold his own with just about anybody around the world. I, I wouldn't worry too much if I were uh, Professor Gaffey that that's going to happen. He never gets tired, and he works. He's always there in the department. <laughs> and I always say this, busy people never say they are busy. Uh, they just manage their time. And Mike Caffey is one of them. <laughs> As the saying goes, space really is not just for astronauts anymore. And as UND space studies continues to evolve, so does the curriculum. As a result, program graduates come away with a solid understanding of how a blend of engineering, science, and policy can integrate for better solutions, and they are well prepared to be leaders in exploration and project development. Graduates of the UND Space Studies program are hard at work all over the aerospace industry. You don't have to look very far into the ranks of the industry's major players to find UND's influence. Johnson Space Center, Houston, Texas home to some of the most prolific achievement in the history of space exploration. And this is the place that represents mission control to millions worldwide. It is also home to a significant number of UND Space Studies alumni. A recent count shows NASA Johnson Space Center alone employs 18 current and past UND Space Studies students in various disciplines another dozen have worked there in the past. And just as UND has left a mark on NASA, NASA has been an integral part of the success of UND space studies. Certainly we have an impact on NASA in a very positive way. So it's a great synergy again with NASA. And a lot of uh, our students are also from NASA, by the way. They take uh, our, our program, get the master's degree, and now we have a PhD recently started. It's going to benefit uh, working folks, especially our online program. When it comes to NASA and its research partners, UND is at or near the top of the list in many areas. The university's work in spacesuit technology is one such example. Dr. Pablo de Leon leads UND's research effort. NASA is very proud of the support they give us and we have delivered. Uh, as far as I know, 
we are one of the few universities, or maybe just the only one university, where the spacesuit research actually goes on at this level. NASA is also very interested in working with universities who respond and who are interested to do projects jointly. So when they realize that we deliver what we said, uh, and you know, if, if we take their money, we, re we give something in return, they, they, they continue their relationship and, and make it stronger, which is what's going on with us. The appeal of UND Space Studies is multi-core. Not only does the program attract significant research opportunities for UND, but it offers equally significant and unique prospects for students. Tim Holland recognized a good opportunity when he saw one. So much so, he decided to go all in. He packed up his station wagon on the East Coast and set out on the adventure of a lifetime to North Dakota. All on the bet that his work with Dr. Pablo de Leon and the UND Space Studies program would land him the job of his dreams one day. He was not disappointed. So of all the places I was looking to find a program like this on YouTube, I found this video of this guy out in North Dakota playing around with a spacesuit. Um, that ended up being Pablo de Alon. So I contacted him, we had a little back and forth, and he invited me to go out to the University of North Dakota for my grad school. Tim Holland admits his first impressions of middle America did cause him a bit of concern. That didn't last long, and upon his arrival at UND, soon found out what it was like to hit the ground running. I knew nobody. I moved into an apartment, unloaded my stuff, and then met with him the next day. He showed me around, and then started listing the things he needed me to start working on immediately. And that's how I got started at UND. I kind of just jumped in and managed not to drown. Unlike a lot of students that come to UND Space Studies from distant locations, Tim was a full-time, on-campus student and was able to benefit with hands-on research opportunities and personal contact with the program's faculty and students. In actuality, most of the program's students study via the distance learning mode. The course is the same, the delivery method is the difference. No matter the mode, organization and self-motivation are keys to success. I always tell them the most important quality for being a space study student, you should know how to manage your time. So if you are able to motivate yourself, balance your time, you can be a very successful student. And I am really proud that we have got great students all along. My name is Amy Ross. I'm a graduate of the University of North Dakota, and I'm an advanced space suit engineer at Johnson Space Center. Amy Ross is an excellent example of just this kind of student. Now an advanced spacesuit engineer at NASA Johnson Space Center, Amy found UND to be just the right balance on the way to a job she loves. I was working full time, so I'd put in my 40 hours a week and then I would come home at night and watch lectures or do homework. And then on the weekend I'd watch lectures and do homework and write papers. So it, it kept me busy, but it was manageable. And even though Amy considers herself very fortunate, as she puts it, to have a job where she gets to play with spacesuits all day, the diversity of course matter presented in the program has served her well. So one of the classes I just took because I thought it would be interesting, I think it was a prerequisite for the Mars class, was Dr. Gaffey's Asteroids, Meteorites, and Comets class. Turns out, <laughs> asteroids are a big deal now. So it's been really, really helpful to have some background in asteroids and comets and why they're important and what they are and where they come from and what, how they work and, and how you might try to do EVA on them. <laughs> Enthusiasm is a common thread that unites the faculty, alumni, and students of UND Space Studies. You can see it in everyone connected with the program. Another shared quality is self-motivation and the ability to find solutions outside the box. Robert Trevino started his aerospace career as a Navy pilot and recruiter. Ever motivated, grad school was next on his list, but he didn't want to quit his job to go back to school. Looking for another creative solution, he found UND Space Studies had the answer. University of North Dakota uh, offered the uh, long distance uh, space studies program so I don't know, it was really interesting, something that I really liked. I wanted to kind of focus on a, on a variety of things, and uh, it kind of fit the bill so that I did not, I still wanted to do the, the hands-on mm -hmm. work and not leave for, uh, 
for two years. And with an advanced degree, Robert has been able to continue in a very hands-on role at NASA. What you see behind me is what we call the deployable crew quarters. It's basically a, a, a sleeping compartment that can be unfolded and deployed. As an aerospace technologist and senior aerospace engineer, he has dedicated his efforts to finding new ways to use materials and resources that have already been used in space, a mission that has big implications for future exploration. I had an appreciation uh, at uh, UND was we, we were looking at the history but also how space flights has, has evolved and be thinking quite a bit about the future. By now, it is clear that what started as something out of a wild dream has grown to become a distinguished, worldwide resource for the development of people and ideas to propel the space industry into the future. Thanks to the hard work and commitment of a passionate assembly of pioneers, UND Space Studies is well positioned to take on the challenges of the next 25 years and beyond. When we celebrate 25 years, I always remember the, the folks before us who made a lot of sacrifice and commitments. Uh, there are so many people that have gotten behind with a very strong work ethic, dedicated to the vision that John had, and we're succeeding. The university is doing very, very well as the result of a commitment from a lot of different people. And heartfelt appreciation for the spirit of John Odegaard's vision will undoubtedly thrive as it is passed from UND Space Studies to the students of tomorrow. Because he had a vision, and because he lived that vision, he made it possible for me to live my vision. You don't go to law school and say, I think I want to be a space lawyer. <laughs> it just wasn't something that I even knew existed. It's something that evolved. And because John did what he did, it made it possible for me to be who I am. And I'll always be grateful to him for that. So with passion, dedication, vision, and courage, the entire UND Space Studies family is proud to celebrate 25 remarkable years. And as the University of North Dakota recognizes this milestone, UND Space Studies is honored to receive recognition from one of our greatest partners. In acknowledgement of 25 years of service to NASA and the space community, NASA Johnson Space Center has awarded UND Space Studies a Certificate of Appreciation for Excellence in Service, the highest honor given to groups and organizations, and an award dedicated to the memory and vision of John Odegaard. You know, it's really nice to be recognized by, by organizations that are national and international in scope. What I'm told is that this is a very prestigious, uh, very coveted award. NASA and has basically been an organization which has changed the world in ways that most people don't even have the foggiest idea. Space Studies, over the last 25 years, has been the largest graduate program at the University of North Dakota. And they do come primarily from Space Command and from NASA. And after that period, you start to amass a large number of graduates in one place. And they do have a major impact. You know, when you get this kind of distinction at that level, it's a wonderful opportunity for a university to be able to say we're meeting our, our responsibilities to our, our community and our state and our nation. And uh, these are the kinds of things that make all of us proud. Awards like this, recognition from NASA, other uh, international agencies, back to the university and to programs like aerospace here in the Odegaard School, makes us all very, very proud of what it is that we do at UND. With an eye on the future, it is hard to imagine what mysteries and challenges might lie ahead. What is clear is that space is more important to us than ever before, and that a growing diversity of creative specialists are essential for sustained advancement, both here on Earth and beyond. It is also clear that UND Space Studies and its partners 
will continue to be an ever-increasing strength in the development of better ideas and the very best space professionals. Perhaps this is really only the beginning, a beginning that was inspired all those years ago by what is in essence magic. The magic conjured by a dream, a vision that with passion and diligence became significant reality. UND Space Studies, 25 years and counting. Proof positive, it's magic on the high plains.